we have a character rig that we're going to use. We've set up the character sets for the character um, that we want to use. And I believe mine that I had set up was the Homer oops, character set setup. Okay, so that's the one that I'm going to start with is that character set setup one. You need character sets in order for this to work because the character sets will shape everything else that we're going to be doing. Uh, if you don't have them, then obviously this next step that we do is not going to work. There he is. So my first step, so I don't ruin my original, is to save as, and then go to so character setup, walk, cycle. How do you know where I can have character setup? You have to make it. Oh. So it should have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is create a cycle, OK? <clears throat> a cycle in animation is something that loops. So the start and the end should look exactly the same. And then for a walk cycle, the middle of it should be exactly opposite, right? So if the start of this is left foot forward, the end of it is also left foot forward, and the middle of it is right foot forward, OK? That way we're creating this cycle of the character walking. Um, if I go to here, here, oops, um, walk cycle, reference. And this is a good idea to have um, some sort of reference up. There's one by Idle Worm, which is this cheat sheet. Uh, which is um, superb because it goes through each one of the poses that we're going to set up. Okay, so our first assignment with this is poses, understanding how to move the character and get them into certain spots. The next stage of this is doing a walk cycle, and the walk cycle is simply poses throughout. So this is a pose at the beginning, that's a pose at the end, and there's a pose in the middle. And then we go into these other spots where we have more poses composed of the walk cycle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our character like this at the beginning, and then we're going to set up our character like this at the end, which is exactly the same, and then we're going to set up our middle points. Okay, so we're basically working here and here, and then we're going to the middle, and then we're cutting that in half, and then we're cutting those in half, and then we're cutting that in half. Okay, so you don't try to animate him here, then here, then here, then here, then here. It's too much work. Okay, you'll see. Um, so I'm going to animate these other parts. Now we don't want to also focus on the entire body at once. We want to focus on just the lower half first because that's the main part. And then we'll focus on the upper half after the main part's done. So I'm going to take Homer here and I'm going to position him into that first pose. So I'm going to move his foot forward and this, oops, sorry, back, move his foot back. Doesn't matter which one I start with, but I'm going to start with the same one here so it's easier. So this is going to be back and then you'll see that he's up on his heel. Uh, if it helps you while you're walking around, watch people walk because you'll really pick up a lot of information about how we walk. Um, especially if you look at yourself while you're walking, or um, not look at yourself, but just keep an eye on what you're doing. Um, it'll become more sense. So I need to figure out which one of these, not that, come on Homer. There we go. So this is the ball uh, control. Every rig is different, so this one I'm going to use the ball control to make him go up on the ball of his foot. You'll notice that the knee is slightly bent here. With his foot back like this, he can't really bend his knee. The only way he's going to bend his knee is if I grab this and push it down. Now his knee is bent. I can grab this foot and push it forward. And then same thing here, you can see that his foot is up on his heel. So I could choose to rotate it like this, but that doesn't really give me a good doesn't really give me a good feel for it because it's not really controlling it so much. Where if I go to heel, you can see this makes it feel a little bit more like he's actually lifting his heel. And then I can pull that forward. Okay, and again, this knee is pretty straight, so I want to make sure I kind of get that out there. Okay, you have to be aware of um, like this thing called popping out, where his knee would just like buckle all of a sudden, and it looks like it's like popping out of the socket. So you just have to be careful you don't extend this too far because it'll look like that as he's walking. Now this is the basic pose of what his legs are doing. So this one is up here, this one is here. Now the other part of this oops, uh, is that his hips should actually be turning because your hips turn while you're walking. So I'm going to go to, uh, let me try this one first. Uh, all right, let me try this one. And what I'm doing is trying to find a good uh, way to rotate the hips without him rotating the entire body. So that one works pretty good. Just rotating this control that way, I'm able to rotate the hips 
without ruining it. So I'm going to go to something like that. That looks good. All right. Now, uh, we don't see it from this viewpoint, but the knees are also and the toes are also kind of pointed outward. People kind of walk bow-legged. Um, walk cycle reference. Let me look at the front. Uh, there you go. Here's a good example. So one thing I hate about Pinterest is all these clicks to get to what I just want to see. View the image. There we go. So you can see here, this person's feet are actually pointed outward, meaning their knee is also pointed outward. Here's a little bit more exaggerated, so you can see it, and right there. Okay. So uh, what I like to do is what happened there. Um, what I like to do is uh, just take these and maybe scoot that over some, and then take this and just rotate that over some. So I'm just going to move this, move that, and then give a little bit of rotation to that other foot. There we go. Okay. All right, so now I need to set my key. Now, if we didn't have character sets, this is where it becomes vital. If we didn't have character sets, every single control I just clicked, I would have to go and hit S on. I would have to set keys on every single one of those controls. But because I'm using character sets, I just have to go into my Homer lower body character set and then hit S. And there it goes. And then what it should say is result 44 or 54 or 7,000, whatever our number of keys or, or attributes we have inside there, it's going to set a keyframe for. Okay. So it automatically went through and set keyframes on this. It went through and set keyframes on this stuff here, on these little knee joints. Everything that I just moved, it set keyframes on. Okay, plus other stuff. Anything that was inside this character set gets a keyframe. So now I'm going to jump up. Okay, so we need to figure out how far this character set is, uh, or how far this walk cycle is. So if we jump to that, um, so here's frame one, obviously, and then this is the end of our cycle. So we're going to do a little bit slower walk because we want um, enough keyframes to be able to interpolate between them. Okay, so typically you would go at about, let's say, for a regular walk, maybe. Um, 40 frames is a good walk speed. We're going to go 60 frames. And 60 frames from here to there is going to be a little bit slow, but I'll show you how we can speed it up after, too. Um, so I'm going to go up to 60. So I'm just going to reset this to 60. And I'm just going to set another key. Okay. So I've set here the start of this, and I've set the end of this. So on my list of walk cycle things, I can check off this one and check off that one, because those two are done. Now I'm going to go to this middle one and set that one up. And that one should be easy, because I just go to 30, and I just do the opposite. So instead of this leg being forward, this leg will be back. And if I switch to my side view, I can line this up pretty good like this. I can take the heel down. I can take the ball up. And you can see how I can get that pretty close to where the other one was. Now I'm going to go to this foot and push that one this way. Take the ball down. Take the heel up. And push that forward. And then I'm going to take the hips. Remember we rotated the hips, so I have to rotate that. This one's easy too because I just switch it. So instead of 34 negative, I do positive 34 foot forward. And then <laughs> he's a little drunk. Uh, that should be set to world. He does hang out of moves. There we go. Let's so we'll move that over like that. That should be good. And then move this forward a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So we'll be able to tweak this further later and get it exactly you know lined up both ways. So I don't have have to have anything selected. I hit S, and so now we should do the Homer shuffle. Okay, so we're almost there. We're on our way to getting him to a, do an actual walk cycle. Okay, now the nice thing about this rig or this kind of animation is that we can kind of see how the pace is going. Uh, I'm going to right click down here and do a playback speed set to max real time uh, or just set it to real time for real. And then when I hit play, this is real time. So this is actually how slow his walk cycle is going. 
So it's fine for what we're doing because again, we're gonna speed it up afterwards. So now we just go to these other spots. So I go, here's my contact, here's this contact. I cut these in half and I'm gonna do the passing one, the passing one, okay? So if I go to this, imagine that we're at about halfway here, which is about 15. This shoe or this foot here should be flat on the ground. Now the reason he's floating in the air is because his heel and ball controls are like off, like they're both raised up, and when they're both raised up on this specific rig, he does that. His his feet are elevated. Some of the rigs, like the Andy rig, um, it's one control. So this control here is the same control as that. So when it transitions, it's like a natural transition. So he's always planted. Homer is not like that. Homer has two separate controls. So I know that each one of these should be pretty much zero, because if I look at the passing, that flat foot is flat right or the, the bottom foot is flat so that's like that um, the other foot is um, bent a bit and pointed down okay so there's no reason for his toes to be bent here anymore so I'm just gonna turn off the ball and actually I can turn off the heel too sometimes it'll do that just reset that and then I can just rotate this some um, and move it up. Now, because Homer is such a uh, portly gentleman, um, this is gonna be a bit tricky to get him to bend up the same way that the other one is. But I'm just gonna kind of keep it there for now and then we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna click off and hit S. Okay, so like on the Andy rig, I could probably take this up pretty far because of where he's at, but because Homer's leg is so big, it's not going to uh, line up right. I think too, like this could probably be over a little bit more. There we go. All right. So now if I watch this, there we go. Okay. So now we're going to keep looking at that. So this comes up. Cool. And then it shuffles back. All right. So that looks okay for now. So now I'm going to cut this in half and do the same thing on the other side. The hardest thing is remembering which side you already did. So that side's the flat side. So now this side will be the flat side. So I reset these to zero. For whatever reason, sometimes you have to like set a key throughout. Like every time you change something, you have to set a key or it tries to update. So I'm gonna be setting keys like several times. Cause like right now I reset these. If I try to move this, sometimes it'll pop back to what it was at. Or if I rotate it, yeah, see it's not gonna do it now, but it did a minute ago. So again, I'll kind of pull that up some, rotate it a little bit. There we go. So now he's gonna walk. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. So we're watching the hips. We're watching the um, the knees. We're watching the feet. We should turn it to the front and see what this looks like. This foot's going way too far back at an angle, so I need to fix that. I'm just going to pull this over some, and then reset my key. Oops. And because I set it at 60, I also need to reset it at 1. If I click on 1 and click on 60, you see how it switches. So I'm going to go to the one that I want, and then middle click, and then hit S. And middle click doesn't update your timeline, so that way I can reset that keyframe. So that looks good. All right, so now the nice thing about contact, passing, passing, and contact is the height of the head. If you look at where his head is, it's essentially in the same spot in each one of those. So at no point did I actually need to raise the hips up again to get him to um, move his head up and down because as you walk, your head is moving up and down. So what I need to do is then go to recoil, which is this one, and this one you'll see the head is a bit lower. So I'm gonna grab the recoil and I'm gonna push the hips down while I do this one. So when we go to here, it's at about like, let's say that frame, like frame eight. There's no seven and a half, so I have to go to eight. And this one, the foot is flat, so I'll reset his heel to zero. Um, his hips are down lower, right, like we said. Now I can't grab this and do it because it'll do that. What I need to do is grab this and do that, okay? And then his foot is up higher in the back, so we'll take this. Does it we'll, move his head with it? What was that? Does it move his head with it? Yeah. 
when you do that one, it moves everything uh, in that chain. Now again, because Homer is such a big guy, I have to be careful of this. Like, that might be too much, we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna set another key here. And then let's see what this looks like. So he goes, there we go. So it feels like a good bit of impact there. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to 37-ish, 38-ish, 38 should be good. And do the same thing on this side. So again, I'm gonna flatten this out. I'm going to, um, oops, see I forgot which one I was doing. That's the one. I'm gonna flatten this one out, <coughs> bless you. Pull that in, pull this down, that there, this up, this rotated, it forward. Okay, so now if we look, it bounces down, bounces down, good. Okay, and again, we watch it from the front, we watch it from the side. Now there's gonna be a one frame hesitation frame one and frame 60 are the exact same frame, so we're gonna see those two frames. Even though it's only one frame extra, we're gonna see that little hesitation on the walk cycle. If we don't wanna see it, we can just set this to 59 temporarily, and then hit play, and then what we should see is the walk cycle playing throughout, and that's what we see, okay? Let's set that back to 60, good to go. All right, so now we're good for that, so I'm gonna go to um, high point right here, and high point right there. Now here, he's at his tallest. So this is where he's actually like, um, if you look at his foot, he's actually like lifting up on his foot and this leg is pretty much straight, this leg is bent. So now I'm gonna go to about the halfway mark here, like let's say 23. We're going to pull him up like this. I'm going to pull this up. Uh, let's reset the heel to zero. That's good there. And then this one, I think I want the ball to be just a little bit more. There we go. And then set a key. Okay, so that's looking all right so far. Mm -hmm. Now we'll do the same thing here. I'll go up to 53, 52, and do the same thing. So I'm gonna go to the heel, reset that to zero. Again, I forget which one. So this is the one that should be up more. This is the one that should be zeroed. This is, should be rotated. This should be up. There we go. All right. So now if we watch this, All right, that's a pretty decent uh, walk cycle so far. Okay, so now what I wanna do is go through my graph editor and just verify that everything is straight. So whatever happens on the left also happens on the right, but obviously opposite. So if I go to my uh, hips here, we'll start at this one, okay? So I'm gonna go to my graph editor for this. And what we should see here is this is the start, this is the end. Right, so that should be this exact same thing. So whatever happens at the start is happening at the end. This graph should be opposite, okay? So the first 30 frames, it does this, and then the second 30 frames, because this is the hips, um, is actually gonna do the exact same thing, um, but it should be a little bit lower because this one goes this far and then this one doesn't go that far. So however far one goes, they both should. So I'm gonna grab both of these and just set this to be like in the middle. So negative 1.5, there we go. And same thing here, uh, 1.5, okay. So basically, actually that one could be a little bit more. That one could be uh, two. This is him raising his hips up. That's his translate Y. This is him lowering his hips down. So when he lowers his hips down for one leg, it should go the same distance for the other leg too, right? Unless he had some sort of like limp. Um, this here is his translate Z. I'm not sure how that got off, but I'm just gonna reset that to zero so he doesn't move left and right. 
Okay, just rotate for this is all good, no big issues. So now let's go to <laughs> this rotate controller. And this one should just be the rotate Y. And you'll see this is what we get. He starts here, he goes here, and he ends up there. Okay, so his hips are going here to here and then back to there. So we don't need all this other stuff that's inside here. All these extra points are just extra keyframes. We don't need them, so we delete them. This will create a nice smoother animation for the guy. Um, if there was any other animation, like on the translates um, or the you know rotates that shouldn't be rotating, I could obviously eliminate those too. Now there is, we don't need to really get into it too much, but like right here at his passing, this hip should be slightly tilted. Okay, because your hips would kind of come up a little bit there. And then the same thing when he goes the other way, it should be that way. Uh, we don't need to incorporate that because I don't want to go too in depth uh, on your first walk cycle. All right, so then I'm going to go down to his um, knee constraints here and just look at this. So here he's moving again from 1 to 30, his knee is off to the side, but then it stays pretty consistent, which seems odd. So I'm just going to eliminate that and just leave it where it is. And then obviously verify it. Anytime you change something, verify that it's a good change. You don't want to delete something that you actually needed. Okay, so that's good there. And you'll see this one, the opposite side, doesn't move at all. So there's no reason if one side moves, the other side should move too. So if one side doesn't, the other side shouldn't. So I'm going to grab this now, and this one's where most of the magic happens. So I need to go kind of like one at a time and take a look at this. So here's his translate X. So this looks fine because he's moving his foot forward and then it comes back a little bit when he's doing his transition and then he goes out. So that's fine. Here's his translate Y. So it comes up and then it goes down, which is what we expect because you raise your foot up for half the cycle and then it's down for the rest of it. And here's translate Z. Same kind of thing. That looks fine. Rotate X. Good. Okay, so all I'm doing is looking at each one of these, making sure there's nothing that looks really like off. Uh, and when I say off, I'm looking for something where it's erratic movement. Like if all of a sudden we had this happening here on a translate Y, that doesn't make sense. Basically his foot's like lifting up, coming back down, and then lifting up later on again. Okay, now watch this. If I click on both of these feet, and I look at just their translate Y, do you see how they're like opposite each other? This one has like a little bump here. Maybe this should be up more. But they should be opposite each other so that they basically whatever one is doing, the other one's doing. Same thing with translate Z. So you can see with one, the translate Z is going this way. The other one, it's going that way. This one's a little bit more bumpier. So maybe I could go through and delete like these out and create a little bit smoother mo motion. There you go. You can see we have a problem already. You can see his foot kind of like flicks right at the end. The other foot doesn't do it too much, but that one is. So I'm going to go to the um, this translate Z, and you'll see that this one goes to basically like negative 12. This one's going to 13. So I'm just going to set it to, no, it's actually going to 10 is how far it's going on this side. Let's see if that corrects it. That definitely helps it. And it could probably go a little bit higher. Like it could probably go to 11. Uh, 0.5. Okay. And all I'm doing is trying to even up these numbers so that whatever one does, the other one's doing too. There we go. Okay. And same thing with the rotate X. You'll see that these are pretty much opposite. Um, I could level these out too. Some of these are going to be you know, like like minuscule things that are going to change. It's not going to be like groundbreaking stuff you're going to see, um, but some of these will definitely help out. Like one thing I'm not liking is how much his foot is flicking right at the end. I really think that looks odd. So I'm going to go to his heel, and I'm just going to delete some of these keyframes at the end, so that if we look at his um, left leg, which is this one, you can see how it becomes more natural of how he lays his foot down, right? So you can see how this right one is flicking. It's staying flat and flicking up and then coming down, where the other one is gradually coming up and then gradually laying down. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. So I'm gonna grab the heel, 
and I'm just going to delete a couple keyframes before so that it gradually gets there like that. That looks better. Okay, so I think for the the bottom half of this, I'm I'm sufficiently happy. Um, there we go. Okay, cool. So I'm going to save this as so I don't lose what I've done so far. So zero one, perfect. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the upper body. So I set this to upper body, and now we look at the upper body. <clears throat> the upper body is actually part of the easiest uh, stuff to do. So here, all he's doing is like. In this case, he's like twisting his arms, right? And it's opposite, so make sure you get that right also. Um, when your left leg is forward, your right arm is forward, and vice versa. Also, because your hips are rotating this way with your legs, your shoulders rotate that way. So it's, they're always opposite. So we have to go here to frame one. And his hips are rotated um, to the left, right? So the front is facing the left. So then his shoulders should be facing that way. Okay, and then um, we're going to animate his arms. Now for his arms, remember we have the IK handle, which is this, and then we can switch that to an FK. So it's actually a little bit easier to animate these with FK. So I'm going to turn off IK. That way I can get to these. Now these guys have never been added to my um, character set, so I need to add them in there. So I'm going to go to each one of these boxes here. And I'm on upper body. I'll make sure I grab these two. And I'm going to go to rigging. Uh, oops, animate. Wrong one. Animate key and then add to character set. There we go. So now these are inside the character set. They turned yellow on the side, so we're good. So now I'm just going to position his hands how I want his hands to be at the start of this. So remember, if this leg is forward, this arm should be back like this. Okay, and if you look at this image, his arm is back pretty far and kind of bent. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I rotate this. This one's gonna be obviously forward, and this elbow will be bent. There we go. Cool, so there's frame one, set a key. Go up to frame 60, set another key. Go to frame 30 and swap it. So I rotate this the opposite direction. So instead of 17, it's negative 17. And instead of this arm being rotated here, it's going to be rotated there. And this one we rotated here. Uh, we'll probably get some interesting result here, just so uh, I'm going to let it go so you can see it. No, nope, it actually worked. Uh, sometimes when you rotate the joints uh, certain ways, you'll get some weird stuff. So that's pretty much it for this, for the upper arms. Now, one thing we could add to this, if you ever, like, watch yourself walking down the hallway, like, not obviously watch yourself, but just kind of be aware of what you're doing. As you're walking and you're swinging your arms, your elbow is actually swinging your arm. Right, so your elbow is driving your forearm and your your hand up. Um, so one thing we could do just to kind of add a little bit of niceness to this is if I just delay this a little bit. If I just pull this back some here, and then set a key, we should get the idea that his his elbow is kind of flicking his arm up. Do you see that? How there's a little bit of a delay where his arm comes down and then it flicks up. So that'll add a little bit of a nice little touch to it. Um, you could go really happy with this, right? If you wanted to, you can just crank this up like, oops, not that much, like that. And now that arm will be a crazy arm. So, so you can a little bit happier, a little bit peppier step. Uh, maybe I'll do that too on this one, on number one. Just rotate that a little bit more. And what this will also do is help emphasize that elbow sum. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to go to about 45. I'm going to pull this back some like that. So again, we get that feeling that his arms are being thrown up there because that's essentially what they're doing. Now some things to pay attention to when you're walking is when you're walking, if you think about it, you're actually stopping yourself from falling. That's, that's all we're doing, right? 
So when you move forward, your body is actually leaning forward a little bit, and then we stop ourselves. That's what happens. So Homer doesn't feel like he's walking forward. It feels like he's marching in place, right? And it's very, like, completely rigid upright, and that's not typically what we do. So more stuff that we could add to this is he should be kind of leaning forward a little bit more and maybe be pushed forward a little bit more. And you'll see just that change there will drastically uh, change the quality of this. Uh, now this is on our lower body, so I need to adjust that on the lower body. So I'm going to go to my lower body. Graph editor. This is the rotate um, X. So I'm going to grab the entire rotate X and move this. And then the translate Z. I'm going to grab the entire translate Z and push that a little bit. There you go. It might be a little bit too aggressive on that. So now he feels a little bit more like he's actually walking because he's lurching forward a little bit more. So you always wanna, again, look through all these things. These little touches add up to a lot of stuff. It adds up to making this animation look and feel a lot more realistic. There he goes. He's on a mission. All right, so now we have one more little area to do, which is the head. Um, kind of annoying his head just swaying side to side right that's not how we walk so what we need to do is go back to frame one and then just grab his neck control oops it's not on a um, character set because it's not yellow so I'll add it to the character set and then I just have to um, straighten him out oh that's his translate where's his neck control is it that one yep okay so that one is on a character set anyway all right so I'm gonna go to my like front view and just rotate his head so we're basically like locked on. There we go. Then I'll go to 60, lock it on, go to 30, rotate it the other way, and lock it on. Okay. Now there's a little bit of a, of a shimmy there, that's fine. His head can move somewhat, you don't want it to be locked in perfectly straight. And remember, this guy has this extra control here, so if I wanted to animate a little bit extra, you know, squashing, I could do that too. Like right here when he's at the top. Let's say this is hold up some. And then right here when he's on the bottom, let's say it's pushed down some. So just to see what that looks like. <laughs> so it adds a little something to it. I'll delete those. I don't care for that. All right. So now we've created our walk cycle. Okay. So every walk cycle you do is going to be very similar to these exact steps. Every animation you do that is cyclical is exactly these steps. You're creating poses here and here, and then you're blending between them. The next animation we do will be the same kind of thing where we have to do um, this exact kind of setup. All right. So now what we want to do is test out our Homer Simpson. So let me save this as walk cycle completed. Complete. There we go. And then I'm going to save it again as uh, tracks editor. Okay. So this only gives us a cycle. So if we were doing a video game and we had a character who needed to walk, this is what we would do is we would have this walk cycle set up. Okay, and the video game programmer would be able to take this walk cycle and apply it to a character in a game. So what they don't do is have a character walk forever. What they have them do is walk one cycle and then they move them. That's why when you walk into a wall, your guy is still like moving. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to take each one of these character sets that we have, uh, head, lower body, and upper body, and we're gonna create a clip of them. The clip will allow us to animate them over and over and over again in an animation. So if I go to uh, my keys and I go to create clip, where did you go? I must have moved it. Visualize. Maybe I'm missing it. Create a character set. Add to character set. Nodes. <coughs> Time warp. Go back. Is 
It's not under here, I don't think. Oh, nope, I know where they moved it. All right. Uh, so I have to go to the tracks editor. So window animation editors, tracks editor, there it is. And inside here, I have to say create animation clip. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all those keyframes in every single one of those clips and allow me to then create a loopable property. So if I want him to walk like for 35 seconds, I can have him walk for 35 seconds. So, um, let me switch this here to head, and I will set this to head. I'm going to say do animation curve. I'm going to say uh, put clip in tracks editor and visor, and say apply. I'm going to go switch this to lower body, type in lower body, hit apply. Switch this to upper body, type in upper body, and hit apply. Cool. So now inside the tracks editor, it's added in all of those things. Now we can't see them all until I go to Homer, and then I open up Homer. So there's lower body, upper body, and head. Okay, so here's our three clips, and you'll see number one, they all line up. They all start at frame one, all these are ones. They all end at frame 60, all those are 60. Okay, so what I can do with this is I move my mouse over to this side. You'll see how I get um, this thing here and this thing here. So this one here, I can stretch this out or shrink this in, and what it's going to do is it's going to compress that animation. So if I set this to 36, remember I said the right speed was about 40? Oops. Control Z. There we go. So here is a 40 frame animation of Homer. And you'll see these stops. So very quickly I was able to take those keyframes and just compress them to 40 frames. Or if I needed to, I could elongate them to, you know, 119. And so now we have super slow motion. Okay, without us having to set any more keyframes, we're able to create this like really cool uh, loop effect. All right, so I'm going to set these to 40 now. And then what I want to do is I want to loop each one of these. I want to have each character set, each clip, loop over and over and over again so that when he gets to frame 40, he doesn't stop, he just keeps walking. And he'll walk for as long as I need him to walk. So I'm going to set this to, um, over here it says post cycle, so I'm going to set this to 10. And you'll see that we get this light yellow color, and that means that we're cycling it for that long. So I'm going to minimize this, I'm going to rewind, I'm going to set this to like 400, and hit play. And then what we should see here is he's going to walk and walk and walk all the way till the end of that. Now what's cool about this is that we could then take this um, animation, let's say I took this thing, I could then take this and uh, reset this to none, set a key on this, come on, there we go, let's say it went up to here, let's move him right there, okay. Now this isn't going to be perfect because of how we've animated it, but, oh that's definitely not perfect. <laughs> Let's go to the graph editor and just set this to be linear. There we go. So now you can see how we can take this clip and have him walk pretty much wherever we want him to walk to. Now it isn't perfect because there is. Typically when you walk there are some faster and slower parts, but for the most part it works, right? So if we needed a quick animation, um, this could work. Or if we're doing a video game or a movie or something where someone's running, you know, you have a lot of application with this. Now let's say that I want him to go a different direction. So I can just go here, let's say right there. So I'm gonna go right here where his foot is up. And let me delete this keyframe. Oops. Let me set this keyframe first right there. I'm gonna delete this one. And I'm gonna go up a little bit and rotate and set and then move. Now this isn't going to work, I just want to show you the uh, wrong way to do this first. Ch -ch -ch. 
<laughs> so obviously that way does not work. Um, but they and they have this really neat tool inside here called the redirect tool. Okay, so here he's walking straight. Uh, I think I need to fix his curve again. Yep. And obviously you want to make sure it's timed up perfectly, just like the bouncing ball when it rolled. You want to make sure the rolls make sense, whatever. Okay. So uh, let's say I go to same frame like here, 100, and I go to constrain. Nope, it was under key. And under key, I'm going to go to redirect. And what this is going to do is I can play with rotation and translation, just rotation, just translation. Uh, typically, you just leave it at the default. So I set this guy exactly where his foot is hitting. So like right here-ish, OK? And then I set a key on it. I go up to, let's say, there. And then I rotate this. And what it does is it makes it feel like he's actually on that foot. And actually, the foot is turning. So I set another key. So again, this isn't going to be perfect, but it'll give us the uh, a better illusion that he is turning. <laughs> right? So it feels a little bit better, not perfect, but a little bit better. And then we could redirect him again. We can go to, let's say, here. And then go and stop him here. I did stop him here. Uh, we'll make them go in a second. Okay, so I'm going to go to this again. I'm going to go to key. I'm going to go to redirect. I'm going to move this to right there. Set a key here. Go up a little bit and rotate it. It's probably too far up. Let's go there. Okay. All right. Now to get him to keep walking, here's a, a quick little thing. Inside the graph editor, this is where I want him to keep moving. So all I have to do is grab this, go to curves, post infinity, and say linear. And what that's going to do is it's going to continue, basically just continue what you're doing forever. Oops. And I grabbed the wrong one because I did not grab the one that said to continue walking forward, I grabbed I did. Why didn't that work then? Uh, curves. View infinity. This. That. I have to grab that one. Oh, that's why. Uh, there we go. I have to make it this in order for that to continue. Okay. So now we'll jump back to this. Do, do, do. And that keeps walking. Okay. So a very cool way for us to be able to have our character now animated, now move around. And then what we can do is go on top of this. We don't need these for the assignment. Um, I'm just going to delete those. And we even don't need him to move around for the assignment. I actually don't want him to move. OK, I basically want him to stay in one spot the entire time because I want to see what this cycle looks like for 140 frames or 160 frames. Okay. So your animation, your turn-in, is 160 frames of him walking. Because I want to see what it looks like with him walking in a cycle to make sure that the cycles are good. But now I can go in here and add some extra animations on top of the other animations, right? So his eyes are wide the entire time. He's not doing anything. His head isn't turning side to side at all. It's very static. So if I go back to my um, character set for head, you'll notice that all the keyframes are gone down here. So I have my track, which is one animation. And on top of that, I can layer in more animation. So things like the eyes blinking, which I believe were on. Oh, those are just the irises. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was neat. Uh, oh, there they are. Couldn't see them. OK. All right, so I have to do these like kind of opposite. That's stupid. Um, so what I'm going to do is, let's say I want him to blink. So we're at frame 40. I want him to blink. So I'm just going to set a key. Um, these are not inside of his head group. So um, I'm going to, maybe I'll just add a, no, a new character set here. So I'm going to go to Homer and just add a new character set that's just like find controls or something. Create sub character set. Uh, Uh, oh, let's just do this. This will be a fun one. Home, blink. Uh, 
from channel box. Cool. Okay. So I've grabbed these, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to frame one, and I'm going to set a key on this. Oops. I just hit undo because I did not want to set a key on Homer. I want to set a key on Blink. There we go. All right. So I set a key on Blink, and it sets a key for all those things. I'm going to go up like two frames. One, two. I'm going to make him blink. Because your blinks are very, um, very quick. Okay, we'll set that. We'll go up three frames. One, two, three. And then we'll open these back up. Okay, so now right at the beginning, we get a blink. Okay, so I can test it out, loop it, cycle it, whatever we need to do. Okay. So now uh, here's where clips are really handy is that I can take that and I can create a um, clip of it. So I can go to my tracks editor. Uh, I'm in my blink. I'm going to go to my create animation clip. Blink. There it is. Where'd you go? Way back here. There it is. Okay. So here's blink. So all I can do is just take this and you'll see over here I can copy and paste it. Right? Or I can duplicate it. And then I can scoot it down to wherever I need it to be. So there's another blink. And here's another blink. Oops, too long. Right? So anywhere I want a blink to happen. I can have a blink happen. I've created a clip of that animation. I can loop that wherever I need to. And then I can do stuff like, um, we're going off the books here. You don't have to do this part. I just think it's fun. Um, I'm going to go to, let's say, his hand is right here. So we're even going to just see if this works. This might just like destroy everything. It did, see? No, it didn't. Uh, I set a key and then I had to reset it or remove it. So I'm just going to rotate this up. I'm going to rotate that. There we go. Okay. Now he jumps his hand back down because that keyframe needs to go back to where it was. So I'm going to go to this keyframe and copy it. Then go up a little bit and then paste it in. So now we should raise his hand up and then put it back into that loop. So see how you can layer stuff on top of it? And then I can take that whole clip if I want to create a clip of that and have that wherever I needed it. So if you watch any animations where they're like waving side to side, they do it once for each side and then they can copy that and paste it wherever they need to. <laughs> and I'm just going to delete that because that looks just too silly. The blinking is uh, good. I like the blinking in here. I'm going to add a little bit more blinking and then we'll get to the uh, rendering part. Let's go here. Remember, we're only doing 160, so we don't need too many of these. There we go. So that should be good. All right, cool. All right, so now we're ready for the uh, rendering parts. Let me save this. And we're going from 1 to 160. Okay, so you're going to be rendering out two different cameras with this. You're going to render out the side view of what he looks like, and you're going to render out the front view of what he looks like. So I'm going to go to my um, cameras and make a new perspective camera. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to set up my resolution gate. Make sure this is at a proper resolution. 960 by 540. Your rig usually comes in at some crazy resolution, so make sure you have that set right. All right, that's good. So uh, when you render this out, you're going to render out Homer from the front view like this. 
then you're going to render a homework from the side view, and then you're going to put those two views together inside of After Effects. Okay? So you don't want him centered because then you can't put the side view anywhere. He's going to be like right there. So we want this to be, you know, like off to the side. Okay? Now to make. No, because as long as the cycle works, then I know the moving would work too. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go over here to my split view, which I clicked on this. And one of these views is perspective one, which I'm going to rename front render. And then I'm going to make this one a new one, and this is called side render. And what I'm going to do is if I click this, oh, strong Homer. Uh, if I click that, then I can line up Homer here, and I'm lining up also this uh, platform. If this ground is lined up and I put these two images of Homer together in my After Effects, then it'll be perfect. Otherwise, what happens is there's a step. This Homer's up here and that one's down there and it looks stupid. So I need to angle this so that's lined up good like that. So close. You're so close. Um, also, Homer obviously should be the same height. That looks pretty close. Maybe not 100%. That looks better. Cool. Okay. So, obviously, you test your stuff out. Make sure you're rendering it in your views to make sure the front looks good and the side looks good. Usually, people set up the side view and don't set up the front, or they set up the front and not the side. So there's the one view. I'm going to save this. I'm going to render the front view. OK, so now I can see the two views side by side. I can see that the ground is a little bit higher in the side view than the front view. Um, I may be able to get away with that. I may not be able to get away with that. We'll see. OK, so what you do is you go to your render settings. You set up your stuff, front render add a renderable camera, side render, rename it. Um, Homer walk cycle. I'm going to put an underscore. I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert my camera name. Okay. So what it would do otherwise is it would name them the same exact thing and it would overwrite each camera. Right. So it would render this front render and it would name it whatever I called it. Then we render the other one and overwrite that exact thing. So I need to right click and add that camera name so I know which camera is rendering. Name.number.extension, 1 to 160. Go to my skin or my quality, set this up. There we go. All right, that should be good. Okay, so then I will go ahead and render this out as a batch render. Now, just so you can see how to put this together in After Effects. It's always good to test your stuff out too. So before you go through the long render that's going to take, let's say, overnight, you want to actually bring it in After Effects, your two images, front and side, and put them in there and see, do they work? Are they matching up the way you want them to? Then the rest of it is pretty easy because all you have to do is hit render. And we'll ignore that. So I'm going to go to my project and I'm going to open up my stuff once it realizes I want to open it. There we go. Go to the desktop. P drive, 40, work, character, images, temp. Uh, all right. So it has one of them, but it doesn't have the other one. So I'm going to go back to Maya and I'm going to save my image here, color managed. Uh, I'm just going to save this as an if out of here, front. And I'll go to the side and do the same thing. Save image, side. There we go. So now when I bring this in, uh, front, side, import, drag these down to my um, new comp, and everything's cool there. All right. So now you can see how um, it's not lined up perfectly. And there's actually like this weird thing where this homer is like floating, or not floating but cut off. Um, so what I need to do is um, ignore their alpha channel. So I'm going to go to interpret footage, main, ignore the alpha channel. Uh, maybe I don't want to ignore the alpha channel on both. 
So I do like this, the um, coloration there. Yeah. Okay. So I need to cut this Homer out so that I can see the other one. So this probably won't work. Let me see. Yep, that's not going to work. So I'm going to go to interpret footage main again, use the alpha channel. And then I can just um, adjust this mask. Okay, so I went to this box and just basically just outlined this Homer. So now I can grab this image and just kind of move it up and maybe just scale it up a little bit. Maybe I'll do that to the other one. I'll take the side view just because of the size that he is. And I'll just adjust him to line up with that one. There we go. Okay. Now we do have this weird line down the center. So to get rid of that, I'm going to click on this, go to my mask, and then just feather it some. And then you'll see we have Homer here and Homer there. So that should work. When we render this out, I should be able to get something like this into my animation. So then when you turn this in, obviously I'll see the front view of what Homer looks like and the side view of what he looks like side by side in one animation. Cool. So that's it. So I save this, I close this, I do a batch render of this. Batch render close. And it says I'm already rendering something, so I will shut down my render. Well, it says I am, but I'm obviously not. Oh, wait. Oh, it might be 2017. No, it's going to be 2017. I don't know. Well, whatever. You batch render it, and then you're good to go. When it's all done, you just do the same thing inside of After Effects with your animations and not just your stills. Everything's cool. Cool. So that's your walk.